Hi, and welcome again to our Bible class. My name is John Parlow. I serve as the lead pastor at St. Mark Ministries, and you're joining us for the third session of our, our class on the last times, or what's sometimes called eschatology, and we've just entitled ours, Is Jesus Really Coming Back January 1st, 2000, whatever? We're taking a look simply at what scripture, the Bible, talks about, and so far we've covered what happens at the moment of death, uh, what does the Bible say? And then, when is Jesus coming again? We've covered that. And now we're going to continue. It's important to, for you to understand, if you're picking this up midway, it would be beneficial for you to go back and watch the previous classes because they all build on one another. That being said, let's talk about another question. When Jesus comes, in what manner will he come? I mean, how will you know he's here? All right, Are, are you going to miss that? Well, if you take a look at the sheet that you can download uh, from our website, it says this on the second page. Uh, Matthew chapter 25, 31. When the Son of Man, the Savior, comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. So one of the things you want to fill in is Jesus comes in glory with all of his angels. And let's, let's just kind of unpack that. There's so many other passages that talk about that. Um, the first one is Jesus comes in the clouds. We're often told that in Scripture, for example, when Jesus ascends to heaven in Acts chapter 1, verse 11, it says, the angels say, this same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way or same manner you have seen him go into heaven. In other words, he's left in the clouds, he'll come back in the clouds. Uh, oftentimes, for example, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 30, and Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, you see the fact that the Son of Man will come back on the clouds in the sky. That's important. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17 talk about Jesus coming back in the clouds and will be caught up with him. Uh, in Matthew 24, 30, the passage I referenced before, it says, At that time... The sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the nations of the earth will mourn. So it's that, it's that sign, it's a, it's a manifestation of his glory. That's the kind of thing you want to think about. So you'll know that he's there. It won't be like, hey, that's a strange cloud formation in the sky. No, you'll know it's Jesus and a few other things. He comes with power and glory, we're told, as that passage just pointed out. Glory is kind of that idea of a magnificence uh, that you can't understand, a, a splendor that we, we can't even comprehend. Maybe you've been to a really good fireworks. We'll understand the fireworks of, of Judgment Day are going to be something that you and I can't even really comprehend at all. Bible also says he comes with the angels in this section of Scripture. He comes with the angels. Um, in Jude chapter, or Jude verse 14 and 15, it says, See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone. So he comes with the angels. Jesus said in Matthew 13, 49 and 50, The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous, speaking of what happens on judgment day, and throw them into a fiery furnace. In, in fact, uh, they're kind of the angels are thought of as harvesters on that day. In Matthew 24, 31, Jesus says, He will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. So you've got in the clouds, with power, angels, so you'll know when he's here. And then it says this, in Acts chapter 1, we read it already, the angel said to the disciples, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7, a passage I referenced before, says, Look, he is coming in the clouds and every eye will see him. Even those who pierced him, so even unbelievers, even those that killed Jesus uh, during his time on this earth, and all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him, so shall it be. So, second thing you want to fill in is he comes visibly so that every eye will see him. All will see him. Not just believers, but all people will see him. And I think that's one of the things you want to make sure you, you understand when it says everyone sees him. Sometimes people think, well, uh, and we'll get more into this as we talk about some of the false doctrine about the end times. Some say, well, only believers will see him, or the believers that will be raised. No, all will see him. 
Remember, it, when it comes to the end, uh, space and time may not apply the same way. People go, well, how can everyone see him in every continent and every place and the dead and the living and so on? When Jesus comes again, what we know is time and space ends and everything changes and we're not limited, certainly he isn't, by those things that we're limited by today. In fact, Jesus talks about how sudden that will be and be seen by all. He's, Jesus says in Luke chapter 17, verse 34, two people will be in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. Talking about the suddenness. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken and the other left. Or it's so quick, it's like a flash of lightning in the sky. Luke chapter 17, verse 24. So it, you'll know when he's here. He's going to be seen by all. It's certainly going to be sudden, that's for sure. It's also going to be kind of noisy. It's like you're not going to go, hey, is that thunder in the sky or did a jet just fly by? No, it's going to be a noise of a different kind. It says trumpets and the cry of the archangel. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, it says, With a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, I don't know what that, that sounds like, and with the trumpet call of God. In other words, there's no secret, quiet coming of the Lord, like only believers are going to hear it. No, everyone hears it, and it's noisy. It, it, it happens quickly. On that day, your body, if you're still alive as a Jesus follower, your body is changed in the twinkling of an eye, we're told, in 1 Thessalonians. Or 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 51 and 52. So I say all of that to answer the question, okay, in what manner will he come? You'll know when he's here. It's not like you're going to miss it. It's not going to be an NBC news story or something you're going to catch on Twitter. Hey, Jesus landed in Australia to be in America on Monday. Not going to happen. Every eye sees him. Remember, he's not limited by time and space. That all changes the moment he's back. Every person, dead and alive, going to be quite a thing. Now remember, when we're talking about the end times, and I've mentioned this in other previous classes, hermeneutics are important. Hermeneutics is just a fancy word for um, how you go about interpreting Scripture. And there's rules of hermeneutics. Remember that you always understand the context in which the passage is written. Don't take it out of its context. Okay? Is it talking about the end times? Is it talking about our life on this earth? Always know what the context is. Understand, Scripture will interpret Scripture. In, in eschatology, there are some difficult passages like uh, Daniel chapter 9, 24 through 27, that are difficult. But when other, there are other passages in Scripture on the same subject, the end times, and you use those that are easier to understand, that are really clear, to help you best interpret those that seem to be not as clear as the others. Scripture interprets Scripture. God is not in the habit, never does, of saying one thing one place and then contradicting himself somewhere else. That's important. Another thing is uh, understand the genre of Scripture. Are we talking about a narrative here, a history, like the Gospel accounts, those four eyewitness accounts of Jesus' life and ministry? Are we talking about a vision like much of Ezekiel? Are we talking about a vision God gave John on the island of Patmos we call Revelation? As we'll find out, when you take those, not literally, because it's literally a vision, so you're, you're translating it as if it's a vision. It's not literally what's happening. He's trying to tell you a story or a message. When you go from literally to literalistically, in other words, you're taking a vision and making it a fact, that's when you run into false doctrine. Generally speaking, as we're going to see, especially in the subject of the end times, people run into problems when they don't understand, what are we talking about here? Are we talking about a vision? Are we talking about history? Is this poetry? Is this a figure of speech? What exactly is this? You want to make sure you know the genre that the Holy Spirit chose to write down his word because most false teaching ignores the context and the parallel passages in Scripture on the same subject. I hope that helps you a little understand better to answer the question, in what manner will Jesus come? To sum it up clearly, you'll know when he's here. Hey, look forward to seeing you join us again.